Hey guys, welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur. Today we have a great guest. He is a San Antonio local and he built his business with just $8,000. You don't want to miss this episode, so stay tuned. Coming to you from San Antonio, Texas, welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur, a podcast created to help entrepreneurs build their business. Branding, marketing, analytics, positioning, and lead generation, plus interviews with other business owners to learn from their successes and failures. Now, here is your host, Abel Garza. Welcome back, everyone, to The Creative Entrepreneur, and today we have a special guest, David Solomon and Veronica C. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing today? We're doing good. good. Awesome, awesome. Good. So you've been in San Antonio for some time. You are the owner of Southtown Barbers, and you've been doing some great things in the community and with your business. And if you could just give me a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what you get, do for your customers. Well, I'm a guy that loves his job very well, and um, I don't see it as work. I see it as something that I love to do. Uh, I was born in Mexico, and I came here in 1985. Uh, when I came over here to San Antonio, uh, I didn't know no English or how to write it or anything like that. So I have to learn on my own because obviously my parents didn't know. So um, a little bit about me, I guess that's that right there. We'll leave mm -hmm. it there because it really is a long story. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, everybody has that story. Yes. How about you, Veronica? <laughs> I've been doing hair for about 20 years. You're originally from San Antonio? Yes, from so. San Antonio. Um I was born in Iowa, Ames, but I'm raised here. Awesome. And so you've been working with David for how long now? Five years. Five years. Yeah, five years. That's I. And so I'm assuming you like it. I love it. Yes, <laughs> I love it. The one thing I really want to know is, David, how in the heck do you stay so damn skinny on the south side? <laughs> <laughs> for it's real. It's the genes. <laughs> uh, my grandma is skinny, and my mom's skinny, my dad, my father, he's skinny. So, it's Man, I don't know genes. if I could do it. See, I'm on a diet right now. The other day I went out and stepped on the scale. And I looked at it, and I stepped off, and I said, this thing is wrong. And then I went back on, <laughs> and I was like, no, this thing is still wrong. And then I went, stepped off. I think people thought it was a stair stepper. Like, right. <laughs> I'm, it I'm, was right. I'm sure so that's I'm helping you lose weight. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to know, like, in, your, in the trajectory of your life, your career, has there been a moment in your life where you just said, you know what, I've got to do this. This is what I am destined to do. Or just something snapped. What was that? You know, it was the art about cutting hair that made me snap and say, this is what I want to do. Uh, I'm a, I love drawing. I love doing everything hands-on. And when I first saw one of the videos on YouTube a few uh, years ago, when YouTube was barely coming out, I saw this guy. He was doing a haircut. He did a design that snapped. Man, so YouTube, out of all things, you know, you look at YouTube, something influences you, and then all of a sudden you're cutting hair. Right. That's amazing. And, and what about you, Veronica? I knew I wanted to do this since I was little. So, from so how, old, how old were you when you wanted to start cutting hair? Probably five, six. Wow. I would uh, cut my Barbie's hair, shave them, try to do little updos on them. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> what keeps you, keeps you motivated? What keeps you going as to, to maintain your momentum? The learning keeps me going. Uh, everything, there's always something new in a haircut, in a style, everything. And that still gets me pumped to get up and start learning the learning part, the knowledge of the hair. That That's absolutely right. But you know what? That's that's almost correct with everything that you do in life. You know, you get interested or you, you're curious about something and then you want to learn more about that. You know, just like with me, if I want to learn more about publishing or if I want to learn more about videography or something, then I somebody on on the right. show will come out and, and actually give me that kind of knowledge or I'll go to YouTube another another way. How did you get started? Like, uh, did you start out with just a little bit of money? Did you start out with, uh, you know, somebody helping you out? Did you start out of your garage? How did you get started in, in this business? Well, eating macaroni and cheese and saving a lot of money. That's so you <laughs> use you used your own money? To, to, to I, use, I use my own money and it's not easy. It's, it's very hard, you know, because we can all, we will all have a dream but we also know reality is you have to have money as well. That's true. That's true. I and mean, a lot of times, I mean, especially in that business, I think, because you're providing this service and it really, you can't just contract that out. You can't just say, 
hey, I'm, I'm hiring this barber and I'm bringing the customer together and I'm, you know, now now I'd like my cut, you know, right. unless you unless you're into lead generation, which is not really the case for you know barbers. So I, I don't know how that would play without you actually putting up some money. Uh, you know, of course, you got to invest in what your your scissors and your exactly. equipment and, yes. and all that, and I'm sure that's very expensive as well. So when you started out, you started out by saving a lot of money. How much money would you say round about to start your business? Okay, my barber shop, the very first one that I got, well, the first location that I was in, it was only about three hundred square foot. So with that, I rounded up maybe like eight thousand dollars that I have to spend, and everything costs money. Even the smallest thing, it all costs money. Yeah, absolutely. And so. You've been doing this for some time now. The, the money is always a challenge. What was some of the, the challenges that you had when you started? You know, you, you gathered up your $8,000, you found your venue. What was the most challenging part of that? Getting the money is the challenging part, seriously. Um, the thing was that when we were young, our parents used to tell us, we can't afford it. We cannot afford it. So that was my mentality. And now when I started to change that was when I started thinking outside the box. Instead of saying we can't afford it, I will ask myself, how can I afford it? And then we start thinking outside the box. And then that's when the money starts to come in. Absolutely. So the mindset of the entrepreneur has to change before you can actually start your business. So those pitfalls of, of, of the mindset or what keep you back. But once you change that mindset as to how you can do it and, and what it is to get to where you're going. So almost you had a vision yes. as to where you're going, if I'm not mistaken. So like you're, you know, I guess in our culture and I'm going to say our culture right. because it's, it's almost inveterate. It's almost in our DNA sometimes right. where, where people just say we can't afford it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so if you think about it, if you keep saying I can't afford it, then it kind of limits you. Exactly. It limits you as to your vision in the f for the future. And so when I think of people who say I can't afford it, well, what can you do to get to that point where you can afford it? Exactly. And I've always thought, and this is just my, my perspective as I've gone through my career, is if I want something, I always try to find something in business that will pay for it exactly and i think i think just by listening to your mindset the way you've changed over the years and the way you've evolved is complete mindset yes and of course you know saving your money and probably reinvesting into your business. yes so yes. when you in reinvest in your business what is it that you're you're taking away are you are you taking a certain portion and reinvesting it or are you even paying yourself right now Right now, at the moment, since we have a new location or we move to another location, I'm not paying myself. But it's all part about of um, investing in your business. Some people say, oh, I spend so much money. No, you didn't spend it. You invest in that because later on, you're going to see it back. So I have eight stations right now, and I see I illustrated like uh, like a realtor, right? If, they, if he's going to sell a house, he's going to have to make it look nice. He's going to make it look clean. Presentation, right? So if I can make that booth look clean, people, barbers are going to want to work there, yeah. right? So that's how I invest. I, I make the station look nice. I make the barbershop look nice. People that are customers, potential customers, are going to want to go in as well as barbers. They're going to want to work there. So what, it, what inspired you to do that? I mean, get... You, I mean, did you just assume that that's the way it was going to be, or did you mirror that from another company? How is it that you said, you know what, I just want it to be clean, I want it to look good, I want it to uh, in, look inviting for other people to, to come and work with me? What inspired you to do that? The advice from a lot of people inspires me to do that. You know, I, I've learned from a lot of people, even for the ones that dislike you, I still learn from them because they always have something to give, whether they know it or not. And we learn from everybody, even words that are small like that, you can change them and modify them yourself and then make your own quotes or you make your own inspiration for yourself. So everything that's around you can inspire you if you look at it outside the box. Yeah. So who's inspiring you right now? Like who's your most, who's your, the most influential person in your life right now? 
the most influential person in my life right now. I really never thought about it like that. Um, I guess it's my father. He's the one that mostly like inspired me. His advice, his knowledge, everything, what he says, everything. He gives me a piece of his life by giving me his knowledge, and I'm gonna value that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my father. So, what is the best advice you think he has given you? The best advice that my father has given me was for my kids. Uh, if we have time, I'll say a little story. He told me one time. He goes, "There was this, there was this guy that was opening up. He had he had a barber shop. He was giving me an illustration. I already know he was gonna give me an advice. He goes, and a guy comes in. And he goes, "Hey, can I get a haircut?" That guy goes, "No, I'm gonna go with my wife and my." kids and my friends and we're gonna have a good time he goes hey how come you're leaving well, why you don't open up another shop and that guy goes and then what i'm gonna do later on he goes and then you can open up another shop and then what's gonna happen he goes by the time you know you're gonna have five different barbershops that are open and then and then in 20 30 years you're gonna be sitting down and you're gonna be relaxing with your family and your friends and then that guy goes where do you think i'm going right now <laughs> so, so I, I so i guess the moral of the story is you can have everything in the world but if you have friends or you don't have your family your then, family yeah. so the thing was that my dad took after that story he goes what is something that i didn't give you when you were a kid and then i stopped and think and i said time he goes exactly i was you have to learn how to balance the two things your work and your time with your family he goes, you want to grow up and you want to give your kids what you didn't have? It's not toys. It's not all this materialistic stuff. It's your time. So you have a successful business. Be sure to learn how to divide that mm -hmm. and make time for your family. That's amazing that you say that because every single entrepreneur, every successful entrepreneur that I've run into has told me that they balance their time by with their personal life and their business life and, and i think that that is paramount whenever you're building a business because we can become overwhelmed sometimes with business and you're just like i gotta go to work i gotta go to work i don't have time for family i don't have time to do this and you know what it takes away from that and then you have at the end no one to share that with exactly you you become on that autopilot to where as soon as your son something major happens and you're like where was i well you were at work man you were too busy you're going to teach your sons to be the same way and then you're going to pass it on and they're going to be having problems because they're not with their family. That's absolutely correct. man. I mean, it just it's amazing to me that you just said that and you almost I mean, you, you even told it in a story, which is amazing because uh, I on this podcast, right. we mentioned this numerous times, almost on every podcast to tell you the truth, right. every entrepreneur that comes on here is saying the same thing. In fact, there's almost some key fundamentals that they, they abide by right. to be successful. And so whenever an entrepreneur comes on here and they tell me that they're balancing their time and their personal life and their business, I'm just like, man, that is essential, essential. Yes. Yes. And and I know that it, sometimes it just becomes uh, overwhelming because you have a, a goal in mind, you have your vision, you're like, I've got to get this done, it's for them. But at what sacrifice? You know? Exactly. You're doing 15, 16 hours a day, and then you have no time for anything else. So Exactly. So one of the other things I wanted to ask you was, how do you get customers? Like, what are you doing right now to market yourself? Right now, uh, it's not business cards, or it's not like, um, you know, how you leave flyers and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's more of uh, getting the customer in and giving them three things that they need or we all need right first thing is presentation the way the shop looks the way you look the way you present yourself the second one is service when they come in if it's their first time welcome to the shop welcome to Southtown. and the third thing is quality of the haircut those three things if we can get at least one customer in like that he's gonna go out because anybody can get a good haircut, but if you have those three things, I can assure you that he's going to talk about you to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I'm tacking the, the customers. You know, that's my, my bait 
for so to speak. Those are some key components to bringing in other customers. I mean, right. And also to, uh, you know, post it on social media and whatnot. Cause it used to be where here's my business card and now it's like, here's my Instagram or here's my Twitter. Well, I see you on, I see you on Twitter all the time. I mean, I'm sorry. I see you on Instagram Instagram all the time and uh, it's great, man. I just saw some, I, you were doing an interview with some guy. I don't remember who it was. I, yeah, he has an amazing voice, by the way. The Carpenter's <laughs> Apprentice, I think yeah. that's his name. Yeah, he's yeah, a very I've seen awesome him more than Roy. once. Roy, yes. I've seen him more than he's 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 been at your shop a couple of times, or at least right, at least two or three times. Yes, uh, excellent show, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, and so uh, I, I mean, I don't know who's doing your photos either. <laughs> uh, I I have a camera. You do, yeah, well, but it's just there. <laughs> well, you're doing an excellent job. I looked at him and I was like, oh man, that's great content. That's great content right. for Instagram, and that's just one of the ways that you, uh, one of the ways that you bring other customers in. Or did they find out about you that way? And that way too, and it's a lot of things. It is a lot of things. You have to really think on the name of the of the shop you want to name it to as well, since we are in Southtown. And I'm thinking, how am I going to get people without paying money to Google to type in the keywords? So I thought about it. I say, okay, Southtown Barbers. So when they go in, they say, I need a barbershop in Southtown area. Guess what? They're putting in the keywords, Southtown Barbershop, Barbers, Southtown Barbers. So the first thing that's going to come out, it's me. The name of your store or the name of your shop was key into getting a good SEO website. Yes. Are, do you have a website? Oh, I don't have a website, but I do have a Google. And when we look at it, we have like 8,000 searches okay. in there. Oh, wait. Because some people, uh, they and I, I always tell them, uh, how did you hear about us? Or what did you do to find us? And they put barbershop in the south side. So south and barber, it's already the keywords for south town barbers. Oh, man. Or they put right there. barbershop in south town. So Southtown's already the keyword, mm-hmm. and they put Barber as the keyword, so that Google mixes it up, and boom, Southtown Barber's is there. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Well, that's a great, and for, for many people who are starting their business, that is a, a key component to building their business, especially if they're going to have uh, internet presence, right? and it's getting a good keyword for your website. I think one of the things I'd like to know more about is how you've branded yourself you just have to be yourself uh, we all have a brand whether we have a business or not yeah let me give you an example uh, if you have family members and you say my brother oh the one that does this this is that that's a brand right there mm-hmm. so we all have to think of how we're going to brand ourselves what kind of attitude am i going to be humble am i going to be like this am i going to be like that so i just i was just being myself and try to teach that to everybody around me and i guess that's how the branding came in towards me david lada oh that's a a awesome guy you know by putting yourself out there and and being an expert in in a certain area and then you start people start seeing that and you brand yourself as an expert in this area um exactly and you know some people that i've talked to before uh I tell them, hey, look, if you do it like this, maybe it will help. Well, that's the way I am. And I'm like, well, if that's the way you are and it's not helping, guess what you need to do? You need to change it. You need to change that mm-hmm. in order for you to help yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it, it all has to do with being humble to people and learning, loving what you what you do. Mm-hmm. And that's how you br- you get branded. Oh, this guy, he's very, he takes very pride in his work and whatnot. And mm-hmm. that's how it, I feel it is with me. So you've been a pillar in the community. And uh, what is it that you're doing with the community that, that is helping out? Right now? Sometimes in the community, we have uh, kids that sometimes they can't afford a haircut. or, But I never put it on social media or anything like that. Um, I just do it. Mm-hmm. We, Me and Veronica, we've, we've done a few more, like a lot of, you know, customers that sometimes they go through a situation, you know, it could be sickness. I lost my home and stuff like that. And we give them free haircuts. The, the, I can't help them with other things, right. You know, but if I can help them with something small, that will change, you know, that's, a, that's amazing, man. I mean, because, you know, sometimes people are having a hard time in their life and, you know, we get put into situations where, 
you know, we have to persevere, obviously, right. but, you know, that kind gesture just changes your day. Like, the other day I was at a restaurant, and I was just by myself eating, and then this little girl was like, can I give you a hug? Wow. And I was like, at first I was shocked. I was like, uh, okay. And then her mom or, or, or guardian was there. And so she gave me a hug. And you know what? I thought about that the whole day. Wow. It was crazy. Like, it, it totally changed my day. Wow. And it was amazing. I just thought, okay, some stranger comes to me and says, hey, can I give you a hug? If I would have been that person that was having, like, a really difficult day or if, uh, you know, I was in pain or if I was going through a certain situation in my life and, and somebody offered to give me a hug and I'd be like, it would probably, I probably would have broke down crying right yeah. there. You know? And any little thing, you know, they say that the tongue, it's a very powerful tool. It started wars before just by saying something, right? The tongue is very powerful. If we learn how to use that for good and just say hi to one another. Hey, how you doing, buddy? I hope, yeah, I'm glad to see you today. That's the power of the tongue. That's the tool we have. You can make that person feel better. Like the girl, she said, can I give you a hug? <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, I think I was at Bill Miller's or something, and it was crazy. So it was just a, it was. It she was, probably thought, "Oh, this lonely man eating." Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I I put out that vibe that I was being I was lonely or something. But she she <laughs> she just came up to me and and then after I finished eating, I told them I said, "Hey, you guys have a great day." You know, they were all sitting down as a family and. Almost every single one of them just shouted out, like, have a great day. Oh, and I was like, mm. that is so awesome. That is, that was amazing. Wow. You know, and, and at first, I, I guess I'm not used to that, but it just goes to show that somebody who is willing to look at somebody else almost from an in, uh, a different perspective. Right. And, and just looking at them and saying, wow, man, these people are, they're happy and, and they're just wanting to give that love to other people. And, and she was one of them. She was a very happy young little girl. Wow. Yeah. Are you a big reader? Do you read a lot? I, I do read a lot. What, what are some, I, some books that you've read recently that we well, can um, recommend? I will say a book. Every time I say that book, a lot of people do young. They, uh, right away. And I can tell you this right now, I read the Bible a lot. So, uh, I mean, so you read the Bible a lot. And what in the Bible has, has influenced you the most? Everything that's in there, uh, when you're going to make a, a business, it tells you to sit and do your plan or something like that. From that to be wise. And if you speak right away, it's for the stupid ones. And if you hold your tongue and think, it's for the wise ones. So <laughs> all that is very, you know, important to me when I'm on my daily routine. So there you have it, guys. We have David Solomon Lada and Veronica. Veronica yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you're in San Antonio and you need a haircut, 811 South Flora Street is where you can find Southtown Barbers. Southtown Barbers in San Antonio, Texas at 811 South Flora Street in San Antonio, Texas. Remember, you don't have to start out with a lot of money. All you have to have is perseverance, a goal, and set it, and you'll get to where you're going. So until next week, keep on keeping on. Thank you for listening to The Creative Entrepreneur. Please click the show notes for additional information. Want to know more? Click on the subscribe button and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by visiting us at tcepodcast.net.